cruising at 74. A portrait of the biker as a 70-something codger. Hi, I'm Steve Kosky, host of Cruising with Papa Steve, where we explore California's East Bay on my Honda Rebel 1100. Let's go cruising. Today is my 74th birthday. My wife is at work. My adult children live on the East Coast. My grandkids are with their moms and dads. And I'm going cruising. Let me start by apologizing to James Joyce for riffing on a portrait of the artist as a young man. Joyce certainly writes much better than Papa Steve. I don't write stream of consciousness. But Papa Steve can write a motorcycle better. Joyce was nearly blind by the time he was 48. Papa Steve has 20-20 eyesight since his cataract surgery. Why Papa Steve? Surely some of you must be wondering. Search YouTube and you will discover a super abundance of Papa Steves. One Papa Steve wants to sell you protein bars. Another wants you to listen to his music. And a third has died and the people who knew him remember him fondly. I'm the Papa Steve who rides a Rebel 1100 DCT and explores the landscape and history of California's East Bay while sitting astride it. I'm the Papa Steve who will never try to sell you anything, especially not protein bars. I have three grandkids, a grandson and granddaughter on the West Coast and a granddaughter on the East Coast. They call me Papa Steve. So I appropriated the name for my two YouTube channels, Cruising with Papa Steve and Papa Steve's Rebel 1100 Garage. I'm a 70-something codger, 74 now, and gratefully I am one of YouTube's Papa Steve's who is still living. I want to believe that my family and friends think of me fondly anyway. I bought my first motorcycle after I turned 71. You might blame such an exotic purchase on a 70-something codger exploring his second childhood. I blame it on Abraham Maslow. Maslow's hierarchy of needs helps me explain why I ride a motorcycle. His theory of behavior was published in 1943. 1943 was even before I was born. Here's a graphic of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Although Maslow never represented his motivation model as a pyramid, he divided the hierarchy into two classes of phenomena that explain why people behave the way they do. The two classes are deficiency needs and growth needs. Deficiency needs include the categories physiological needs, safety needs, belonging needs, and esteem needs. Physiological needs must be satisfied first, before any of us moves up in the pyramid. They are the basic requirements people must fulfill to stay alive. Air, water, food, sex, sleep, clothes, and shelter. Not necessarily in that order. For example, many of us have experienced the compulsion to sleep, overpowering the desire for sex. Safety needs include health as well as personal, emotional, and financial security. Belonging and love needs are kind of self-explanatory. They include family, friendship, intimacy, trust, acceptance, as well as giving and receiving love and affection. Esteem needs include the desire for status, recognition, fame, prestige, and attention. But esteem needs also include the need for strength, competence, mastery, self-confidence, independence, and freedom. 
Categories of growth needs are cognitive needs, aesthetic needs, self-actualization, and transcendence. Cognitive needs describe the will to learn and acquire knowledge. Cognitive needs include creativity, foresight, curiosity, and the search for meaning. Aesthetic needs follow cognitive needs to beautify one's self and one's life. Self-actualization is the need to realize one's full potential. It includes partner acquisition, parenting, developing talents and abilities, and pursuing goals. Transcendence is about spiritual needs. In Maslow's words, transcendence refers to the very highest holistic levels of human consciousness as ends to oneself, to significant others, to human beings in general, to other species, to nature, and to the cosmos. The need to ride a motorcycle at the age of 74 probably has a lot to do with Maslow's esteem needs. I have had seven decades to nurture my eccentricities. I sense among my many eccentricities the human compulsion for competence, independence, and freedom, wrapped around the thrill of throttling an 84 horsepower two-wheeler along the tarmac. But is riding motorcycles at an age where so many of us already find it difficult to push ourselves out of our favorite recliner, best described as a deficiency need? If it were, more of us codgers would be cruising around on motorcycles wearing armored jackets and helmets. Riding a motorcycle at 74 is probably better classified as one of Maslow's growth needs. I think self-actualization. Maslow explained self-actualization in his 1954 book, Motivation and Personality. What a man can be, he must be, he wrote. By that he meant realizing one's full potential. Maslow describes this as the need to become the most that one can be. People may have a strong desire to become an ideal parent, or to succeed athletically, or to create art, or to ride motorcycles. Maslow didn't write about riding motorcycles, but I think it should be included. So should producing YouTube videos about riding motorcycles. Self-actualization needs include pursuing goals and utilizing and developing talents and abilities. Here's the story of how I became the producer of my own YouTube channel about riding motorcycles. Being the creator of a YouTube channel is not the pinnacle of a creative life that you might assume. Creating a YouTube channel is so cheap, anybody with a smartphone and an internet connection can do it. I stepped up to the next level and bought a GoPro, then upgraded my computer to run the free, resource-hungry video editing software I use, VSCD for now. I'm guessing I have invested about $4,000 in video equipment, microphones, cables, GoPro mounting systems, and so on. Having an attractive marketing idea is important. It's too bad I don't have one. My channel is about the three intersecting circles of a Venn diagram, where one circle is writing my Rebel 1100, another circle is exploring the part of California where I live, and the final circle is humanizing what the camera captures over the handlebars of my motorcycle. Perhaps 10,000 viewers throughout the entire cosmos of the internet are interested in where those three circles overlap. And I suspect many of those viewers are my three-year-old grandson, who watches my videos over and over because he wants to see Papa Steve. As of my birthday, scattered among those 10,000 viewers are 113 subscribers. I wasn't born in a half shell as a 70-something codger, so here is my backstory. I was born on Albert Einstein's birth date in 1948 in Des Moines, Iowa. I was six and the oldest of three children when my mother died in a car accident while our family of five was living in Chicago. I have two younger sisters. After the accident, my father moved with my sisters and me back to Des Moines, where after several months, he met and married my stepmother. She brought her own child into the marriage, 
a boy who was three weeks younger than me. Within a year, my father and new mom had another child, so I became the eldest brother, just barely, of two sisters and two brothers. We moved around the Midwest after that. My father was an itinerant retailer. He worked for SS Kresge before it morphed into Kmart, then failed. Every two years he would get a promotion. The promotion always meant moving to a new city. In addition to growing up in Elgin and Chicago, Illinois, I lived in Iowa, Missouri, and Kansas before graduating from high school. As a 70-something codger looking back, I think of it as touring the Bible Belt. I was a lazy student in high school. I used to squander my chemistry and physics classroom hours drawing pictures of airplanes. Jets, mostly. Despite my mediocre grades, my father was optimistic about my future. He insisted that I go to college. My parents' gift to me when I graduated from high school was a suitcase. I enrolled at Wichita State University in my naive 18-year-old mind because I drew a lot of pictures of airplanes. I thought my doodles could transform me into a professional aeronautical engineer. Wichita State had a crack aeronautical engineering program. Wichita was the air capital of the world. Cessna, Beach, Learjet, and Boeing all manufactured aircraft there. McConnell Air Force Base was located near the edge of the city. I continued to be lazy in college, compounded by being an undisciplined student. After earning D's in algebra trig twice and failing chemistry, I changed my major from aeronautical engineering to English, where I was earning A's and B's. I loved writing, apparently more than doodling airplanes. One of the problems with going to a fairly large university, Wichita State had 12,500 students at the time, is that it's easy for a naive student to fall through the financial aid cracks. Nobody told me that you had to reapply for financial aid every year. I'd never been to college before. How was I supposed to know? I dropped out of college after my sophomore year because I couldn't pay tuition. So I went into manufacturing for a while. Coleman Company, you know the people who make all that camping gear, hired me as a punch press operator. The job lasted about six months before the tedium got to me. Then I got the break that set me on my career path. A small business weekly needed a business reporter. I got wind of the opening and applied. I'd never taken a journalism class, possessed no school newspaper experience, and knew only the slightest bit about business. But I could write passably well. The publisher interviewed three applicants then hired me. He told me that he picked me because I was the least qualified. He said he thought I would stay with the job longer. He paid me $75 a week for the first month of probation, less than minimum wage. After probation, my salary rose to $175 per week. I was excited about the opportunity to do work that was more meaningful than stamping out lantern bottoms, and I thought no more about my publisher's ego-crushing, low expectations. I stayed with the newspaper for three and a half years. I loved writing. I loved journalism. I loved learning about newspaper design and layout. Eventually the publisher sold the newspaper to a young journalist fresh out of University of Kansas William Allen White School of Journalism. The new publisher wanted to change the focus of the newspaper from business to politics. He hired a political reporter from Wichita's morning and evening dailies to run the paper. I went back to Wichita State to resume working toward my undergraduate degree in English, adding a second major, journalism. I had unintentionally become a non-traditional student, but in so doing I left behind the lazy and undisciplined undergraduate. My grades improved to A's and B's. I graduated with a bachelor's degree, double majoring in English and journalism, then entered the creative writing master's program at Wichita State. Admission to the master's program came with a graduate teaching assistantship, teaching college writing to undergraduates. The assistantship launched me to a new career path, college teaching. 
after three and a half years in the master's program i accepted a full-time teaching position at the now defunct st. mary of the plains college i replaced the college's first full-time faculty member teaching community journalism he had only held the position for one semester before a student hit him with a car while he was walking on campus one night the college fired him while he was still in the hospital apparently he hadn't taught anything for an entire semester i could never make this stuff up four years later i was admitted to the doctoral program in the highly regarded school of journalism at university of missouri i earned a phd with specializations in journalism history and social science research methodology the missouri doctorate opened doors for me at various times to faculty positions at st bonaventure university in new york point park university in pennsylvania and st elizabeth university in new jersey from which i retired in 2016. i started my first youtube channel cruising with papa steve after a friend of mine from my college days at wichita state university told me he wanted to see pictures of me on my suzuki boulevard s50 decked out in my writing gear i thought why settle for photos so i made a video cruising around pleasant hill used it to launch my youtube channel last july then invited my friend to watch and subscribe i like to include music in my videos unfortunately i'm not very musical i can sort of play six blues tunes on the c harmonica but i play them badly so any music you hear in my videos is performed by people who are more musical than i am the blues guitar and harmonica intros in my most recent videos are performed by my college friend who triggered it all, Too Slim Tom. The viewing audience for Cruisin' with Papa Steve is gratifying but small. I detected broader interest in motorcycle maintenance how-tos and related stuff. So in October last year I started a second YouTube channel, Papa Steve's Rebel 1100 Garage. So, that's my backstory, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for cruising with me and Abraham Maslow on my birthday. I'd be delighted if you would subscribe to Cruising with Papa Steve. If you don't, I'll be just another codger talking to himself on the internet.